Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, we're going to cover the basic methodology for breaking rocks so that you can have a successful expedition regardless of which type of mining equipment you have. So stick around to learn how to break rocks in Star Citizen. I've broken the video timeline up into chapters, so check the description for specific timestamps or hover over the progress bar to skip ahead. So let's get started. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the mining interface. While in a mining vehicle, you activate mining mode by pressing M. You can switch between fracturing and extraction modes by right-clicking, and activate the fracturing or extraction lasers by pressing left-click. You can increase and decrease the laser intensity using your mouse scroll wheel, or rebind this to another set of keys or throttle slider if you want more precise control. The leftmost table will tell you which mining laser and attachments you have installed. The center left bar shows your current laser intensity level. The right center bar shows the rock's charge level with optimal and overcharge zones. And the far right table shows the rock's metrics and composition percentages, as well as the current cargo carried by your ship. If you're using the Greycap multi-tool with the orbit mining attachment, there are no mode switches to toggle. Simply right-click to aim down sight, left-click to activate the fracturing laser, and use your mouse scroll wheel to increase or decrease the laser power. When aiming down sight, a holographic display will appear on the left and right of the multi-tool. The left side shows the rock's charge level with optimal and overcharge zones, and the right side shows the rock's metrics and composition. The laser intensity level is shown in a display box on the back of the hand tool. You'll remember that instability signifies how volatile a rock's charge level will respond to the power you're putting into it, where rocks with low instability will have a direct and consistent response, while rocks with a high instability could have their charge rates fluctuate wildly. And resistance signifies the rock's ability to resist the mining laser's input energy. Rocks with lower resistance will require less power to break compared to other rocks of the same mass, and similar sized rocks with a high resistance will require more laser power. The actual amount of power required to fracture a rock is dependent on both the mass and the resistance. If you find yourself having trouble breaking rocks, you'll need to understand these metrics in order to select an appropriate mining laser and modules. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment if you notice anything that isn't clear or might have changed in future versions. The key to successfully mining in Star Citizen is managing the amount of energy you put into a rock so that it fractures, without putting so much energy in that it overcharges and violently explodes. Knowing how to manage power and keep the charge level in the optimal window is a universal mining skill that everyone should learn to master, regardless of what equipment you're mining with. This next section covers the basic methodology for mining, and I'll talk about specific differences for each type of mining equipment in their own videos coming up later in this series. Whether you're mining in a vehicle or using the handheld multi-tool, the same general concepts apply to fracturing rocks, although the interface on the hand tool will be simplified. With the mining interface open, aim at the rock you want to start mining. Once highlighted, the vehicle or multi-tool will begin scanning the rock which will populate the type, mass, instability, resistance, and charge level with optimal and overcharge ranges. Check that you're close enough to the rock, moving towards the rock until you are within the optimal range, as indicated in the top left of your mining interface. Activate your mining laser to begin applying power, then increase the laser intensity until you see the charge level start to increase on the vertical axis. Once the charge level rises into the optimal window, reduce the laser intensity until the charge levels stabilize on the vertical axis. As soon as you get into the optimal or overcharge windows, a bar in either window will start to fill in horizontally from outside in, indicating your progress towards fracturing the rock. Keep a close eye on the charge level and be careful not to overshoot the optimal window. It's okay if the rock briefly gets into the overcharge zone, since the stored energy will decrease over time. However, if you overcharge it too much, it would be best to give the rock a bit of time to cool down. When either the optimal or overcharge horizontal bar have completely filled in, the rock will fracture. The 
more overcharged energy the rock has stored, the more violent the fracture will be, causing the fragments to scatter over a wide area, or even causing damage to your vehicle or yourself. The best case is to have no overcharge energy at all. If you're mining a gemstone deposit, the fracture will leave behind individual gemstones that can then be collected. The Grey Cat Rock and Rock DS vehicles have an extraction mode available, but the Grey Cat Multi-Tool does not. You'll need to grab and store each of the gemstones individually. If you're mining an ore deposit, the fracture will leave behind several fragments that will need to be fractured again before being collected. The fragments that have a yellow outline need to be fractured further, and the fragments with a purple outline are ready to be extracted. Because the rock fragments will have slightly different compositions after breaking up the parent rock, it's possible that your desired materials could be concentrated in a single fragment, which is considered a good break, or they could be dispersed in low percentages across multiple fragments, which is considered a bad break. With all of your fragments fully fractured, you want to switch to the extraction laser by right-clicking, then targeting the desired rock fragments, and activate your extraction laser by left-clicking. The materials will start being collected, and you'll see the vehicle cargo details update with the materials you've now extracted. Now that we've covered the basics of mining, here are some helpful tips. Tip number one is to use the right equipment. In a prospector or mole, the mining lasers and modules you choose can have a huge impact on your ability to successfully fracture a rock. The two areas this is most notable in are total laser power and instability. Some rocks will be too large for your prospector to break, and some might have too high of an instability factor to properly manage power. There are separate videos for mining lasers and mining modules later in this series where I'll cover each one and what my recommendations are. Tip number two is to wait to extract fragments until the end. It's up to you whether you want to extract materials in the middle of fracturing a rock. However, I recommend waiting until all fragments are ready for extraction before starting to extract. This gives you the opportunity to extract the best concentration of materials first, and then work your way through the less valuable filler material. If you're quantanium mining, collecting volatile materials early during the mining process could leave you rushing to the refinery as the timer expires, so this is a good habit to start practicing. Tip number three is to strategically overcharge rocks to keep your workspace clean. If you find fragments that you know you don't want to collect, but they're blocking other materials, it's possible to overcharge these rocks on purpose, causing them to explode and cleaning up your workspace. If you overcharge them too aggressively, the resulting explosion could launch the other fragments hundreds of meters away or possibly destroy them, as well as risking damage to your ship, so only use as much power as is necessary. Tip number four is to get yourself some location markers. While we don't have the ability to create private location markers right now, there is a way to mark locations of a nice deposit to come back and revisit later on using package delivery missions. Open your Mission Manager app in your Moby Glass and accept a package delivery mission, preferably one where you can collect three packages from one location. Then track the mission and pick the packages up with your mining ship. While the mission is tracked, each package will show its location on your heads up display, allowing you to go to its exact location. These packages can be left on planet surfaces or dropped into an asteroid field to mark locations of good deposits. The downsides of using this method are that you cannot quantum travel to the package location directly, so you'll be doing some potentially long-range travel, and I'm sure the intended recipients of these packages won't be thrilled to see how you've managed to mishandle them. Tip number five is to know how much it takes to fill your mining vehicle. If you're in a prospector, a single rock with a 30% concentration of desired materials is enough to fill up your entire cargo hold, but you can achieve the same thing with a few deposits in the 20% range, assuming you get good breaks. If you're mining non-volatile materials, there's no time limit for when you start extracting, so you can feel confident going after those 15% rocks when you find them. Tip number six is to have your cheat sheets handy. It's important to know how valuable certain materials are so that you can make good decisions on which rocks are worth mining. Not all rocks are going to have perfect compositions of exactly what you want, and it's important to have the numbers nearby so you can make a good, value-based decision. I've got a handful of cheat sheets saved on my Discord server, which you're free to download and save as references. 
Use the link in the description below to join my Discord server. And don't forget to say hi to the rest of the Red Legion while you're there. And tip number seven is to know your bug fixes and workarounds. It should come as no surprise that there are bugs in the alpha build of Star Citizen, and some of them can be pretty frustrating when you just want to have a nice, relaxing mining session. While this tutorial series isn't intended to cover version-specific bugs, I'll have supplemental videos talking about the known issues between each patch to help simplify your troubleshooting efforts. In general, there are a few ways you can try and work around general bugs. The first step should always be to check the issue council reports for the problem you're facing, or check online for version-specific known issues. If you find yourself struggling with a rock that won't show any scan details, or shows the entire charge level as overcharge zone, try hitting the rock with a short burst from your fracturing laser on low power. This is generally enough to trigger a rescan, and accurate details should start popping up soon. For other bugs, it sounds cliche, but you should really just try turning your ship off and back on again. Power cycling your ship is a good way to reset things, and if it works in the IT world, it can certainly work for spaceships in a video game. If power cycling your ship doesn't work, try logging out of the current server and doing a fresh login. Some issues can be caused by poor server performance, so you want to eliminate a bad server from the possible sources of your issue. And lastly, if you're at your wit's end and still can't get past a bugged ship, you can try to file an insurance claim to get a fresh vehicle. Tip number eight is probably the best thing you can do in Star Citizen. Find yourself a group of fellow miners to work with. Mining alone is fine, but it helps to have a group of mining experts that you can reach out to for advice or participate in larger organized mining sessions. There are a number of organizations on the RSI website, and the one that I would recommend is the United Earth Mining Corporation. They have a dedicated Discord server and host weekly group mining sessions where all are invited to participate. Check the description for a link to their RSI organization page. And there you have it, your guide to breaking rocks in Star Citizen. Next up, we're going to take a deep dive into each of the different mining tools and vehicles, followed by an in-depth guide for mining Quantanium, one of the most profitable materials to mine, but also the most dangerous. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last of all, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because your next mining run could have been your best if only you'd hit that thumbs up button.